Rubber gloves. I have the freeze put these rubber gloves on. There it goes. everybody for subscribing Hey, what's going on, gang? Welcome back to the channel. So, um, we'll be doing a little bit of work on the SC today. Uh, <clears throat> I know if you've been keeping up with the station, I've been doing a lot of GS300 content. Um, I did the exhaust and the control arms and all that. That was like an emergency job. Um, I had to stop doing work on the SC for uh, a couple days, mainly because that's my daily driver. So, I have to make sure the GS300 is flawless as far as drivability wise. So, um, if you was wondering if I gave up on the SC, no, not at all. Um, the SC is pretty much the project car. When that's down, I had the GS. Like I said, I need the GS to work. In other news, keeping up with the station. Thanks a lot. Thanks for showing the love. Um, I am in the process of uh, collecting parts to do a manual swap on the GS. But now the dilemma is I have to get the SC300 out the way because the way, how, the way my actual uh, house is set up, um, I have space just on my parking pad, but it's more so on the slope. So I noticed when I did the exhaust, I couldn't get to the other side of the car like at all. So that's going to um, hinder me from actually doing the manual swap. So we pretty much just got to get the SC up and running now, especially because the cold weather, the cold weather is upon us here in Maryland. We're looking at 30 degree weather coming up in like another week or two, and it's going to be like too cold to be doing major, major work on the SC 300. So that's another reason why we gotta get that thing going. Um, oh, bro, as you see, we are in the garage. I know like a video or two ago, um, I mentioned I was gonna clean it and I cleaned it. Like I got it kind of somewhat organized in a way. Don't mind all of that kaput in the corner. That right there is stuff that has to go in the SC, including the radiator and the intercoolers over there behind the box, which is probably not a good thing to have a box on it. But yeah, I cleaned it up in here. Uh, I actually wired in a socket. I'm not a professional at all. Um, I do got to get like the face plate for the socket. Um, the reason why I put the socket so high is because if I put it down low, you see all this wire would be just all down on my table, and especially because I do a lot of cutting and stuff. I didn't want to damage that. So, I mean, it works. And the best part about that is with the toolbox, I'm back in my toolbox again, hit me out. The best part about the toolbox is I got the outlets for real. So, I mean, I'm good. I don't even need that down here. So if I had to use the extension cord or anything or sockets, I could just plug up anything in there and we are good to go. And I also rerouted my lights and I actually put, I actually put a socket here. I do gotta get the face plate and actually bolt that to the wall because I ran out of uh, the little hangers that actually is probably a proper name, but the hangers that go in it. But hey, guys, I've been doing as much as I can with the little bit of time I have just because work has been crazy. I picked up a bunch of extra hours, a bunch of, um, well, a new run. So I've been doing like six, pretty much seven days a week. So I'm just doing the best I can do. So without further ado, as always, I talk your heads off. Thanks for checking out the station, y'all. All right, so today I'll be installing the Chase Bay's Brake Booster Delete. Anybody who knows when you're running this front intake manifold um, setup, this back part actually hits the um, the back part of the manifold right here in this area, hits the uh, OEM Brake Booster. So I'm gonna do away with the Brake Booster so that way I have more space for me to be able to take this in and out without having to hoist my engine up. Um, and it'd be more so for me, a modern day look, it'd be a cleaner look and truth be told, I did not do it 
for the break capability that it may or may not give me. I literally just did it for space wise, just because like there's no space once you put that intake manifold on. And it's not like I'm gonna be taking an intake manifold on and off constantly. Once it's on, it's on unless something happens and I have to take it off. But at least this way I know I don't have to hoist my engine up. I give you guys the rundown. Um so Chase Bees is on Chase Bees website. I definitely will leave a link in the description. Uh this is Chase Bees single uh brake booster. Um, single piston brake booster. They do sell a dual brake, a, a dual cylinder. Um, so there'd be one here and one here for your brake and for your front and for your rear. But this one it just has a single. Um, the only downfall to this is if this actually fails, I will have no brakes at all. Pray for me. So the main goal today is just to put this on so I can put the car together. I already ordered the dual one. But that this actually took almost two weeks to get here, and I literally don't have time to wait for it. At least this way, I could put this on. I could go ahead, get my car um, dialed in as far as the bass tune, take it to get it tuned, and then 10 times out of 10, by that time, I should have the dual brake sense, the dual piston booster. So that'd be perfect. So when you are installing this, this comes just like this. It didn't come with this, so you had to buy this and then this. But if you get the dual one, the dual one actually comes with this already together. I'm not sure if it's already attached or not or in the box separate. I'm not 100% sure, but I had to purchase this and this separate. This right here is about, I think it's almost like $350 or $400 or something like that. I'll, link, I'll leave the link in the description so you can get yours. But you need this uh, Chase Bay's... Um, two-way brake bias valve right here so what this actually does um you twist this knob and it's supposed to add extra braking force either to your rear more or to your front more or you leave it in the middle i'm figuring and it most likely may not run like stock i'm not 100 percent sure this is my first time actually installing something like this to be honest i never ever took the brake booster out of sc before i'm just being honest I never took it out of SC before. I did do my GS. It was super simple. I'm pretty sure. And I'm hoping that this is super simple. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get out here. We're going to get the old one out. And we're going to go ahead and bolt this one in. All right, guys. So I, go in, I went ahead and took the time and um, assembled it. Uh, pretty straightforward in and out. Um, so this has like a bracket pretty much built onto it. I just bolted it onto it. So that way, you know, it's not flopping around. Um, I'm not 100% sure that's how I go, but that's how I'm going to run mines, and it should be good to go. So this one right here, uh-oh, this one right here actually goes to the rear, and these two right here go to the front. All right, so we out at the car, and I can actually show you guys. Let me see what probably be the best hand to grab it with. You see, it's already dinning in the brake booster. They just came from pitting it on and lowering the motor. Pretty much that's what you get right there so as you see it's not bolted on at all there's no way that's gonna go on like i said without hoisting the engine up see let you know i wasn't playing around so all right so <clears throat> on the inside so you see one bolt two bolt three bolt and four bolt and it's like a, it's like a cotter pin right here that holds the rod in try my best <laughs> Kind of can hold it around him, but on the outside, I'll show you. On the outside, I actually took the cylinder off. And I already drained the cylinder, so that way, just less stuff in the way when it's time to pull this thing out. So that that should help me pull it out a little bit more easier. So yeah, let's see what we got. It's super, super duper tight in here, but I'm pretty sure I can get this thing out without any problem. All right, guys, so I had a little bit of trouble getting this thing out of here. Um, So, not sure. Let's see if I can get a good eye on it. Um, So, you see that box right there? That was actually, one bolt was here, and the other bolt to that is sitting right over top of the stern column. So, that's, like, really hard to get to. Um. I'm gonna probably just put that bolt in only because I'm not gonna be able to reach it. I don't wanna go try to put that bolt in and strip it, but 
is out. So you go in. Should be out. It's out. So. Got a hand. Pull it out now. Super. Still super easy besides that one part. Gloves. I have the freezer. Put these rubber gloves on. Just shimmy it around. Should just pull it straight out. This thing is huge. Ah, there it goes. Boom. And we have like a gasket. I want to keep that in, please. Bunch of these, bro. You can already see the space. Like, come on now. Come on now. Come on. You know what? I'm going to need a hug after this, guys. I'm putting you on game with this one. Bro, <laughs> we don't even gotta do a fitment test. You can see the dirt. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see the dirt ring. Like, look, just how, just look how clean this is. Well, once I tighten the bolts, I just gotta hook up the lines. Now I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead, bolt this thing in, and just hook the lines up. I probably won't bleed it today, just cause it's, I'm cold now. My hands are freezing. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. I ain't built for this cold anymore, but I'm going to put this thing in and give you guys a look. See, we're going to do a fitment test. How about that? All right, so everything's bolted up. Came out good. Decent look. I tried to wipe it and clean it, but the car just needs a detail overall. But you see it's in there. Nice. Beautiful. Um, So I had to use the banjo bolt. The actual fitting that came with it um, wouldn't work at all, you know, with a banjo bolt. But... I mean, that's my only complaint, is that I had to use the banjo bolt there. I mean, other than that, should be good. Um, should be good. And like I said, I'm not going to bleed the brakes today. I'm done for the day. Get some rest for work. And I will be changing this one out, too, because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> this looks crazy. Um, there's the fitment test. Per look. I mean, look at that. <laughs> so... And just pull this joint off. Like I just dropped it in just now, but look, watch this. I'm so proud of myself. There it is. Bam. Definitely wasn't trying to come off because it was on like an angle, but it should be good to go. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, pretty easy job. Probably one of the easiest things I ever did on the SC that was easy but slightly technical but super easy. It would have been 10 times easier if I didn't have to get down there in that footwell, but it's all good. I can't complain. Um, but, yeah, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully, um, this little slight install video gave a little bit of insight on the Chase Bay's uh, brake booster delete. Um... I'm not sponsored at all, so don't think this is me just promoting it because I'm a sponsor or just promoting it, period. This is just me showing you how it is on the car and the reason why I actually got it. Can um, adjust the bre the actual braking, uh, I guess you would call it braking force to your rear brakes versus your front brakes or your front brakes to your rear, vice versa. Um, but for my case, like I said, I just got it for the space. It is what it is and you see it looks good and i can actually install my manifold so still a slight long slightly long way to go on the sc300 to get it up and running um but that right there actually helped me out a lot because now i can actually install my harness my intake manifold um and start bolting everything the rest of the things up so that was kind of holding me back including having to work on the gs300 so now we got a little bit of leeway and we can start really rocking and rolling on the SC300 again. And next video or two, I'll show you the actual ECU I'm going to be running in the SC300. Um, my harness is already modified for it, so that's perfect. Didn't have to spend 16, 1800 on the harness yet. So that saved me a lot of money in the pocket. So um, yeah, guys, as always, thanks for checking out the station. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out.